Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scott here from the Haskin Cast podcast, and I am here to do something a little bit different today, uh, doing a walkthrough of Rick Allen's new sound library, Industrial Metal. And I would have done it sooner, but I had to stop my face from bleeding from the impact that these sounds have. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, okay, not so much, but they do sound fantastic, and uh, I wanted to share this with you guys and let you know that this is available, let you know how functional it is, what it sounds like because I absolutely love so many things about this library. Um, I haven't worked with a lot of libraries like this, so uh, I found it really interesting how small the download size actually was. Uh, it's less than a gigabyte, and you get so much with it and so much high-quality stuff. But I realized, you know, when I download these libraries that are like 18 gigs, 30 gigs, you know, all these things, I find that I don't actually use a good amount of what's in the library. So all this extra stuff is sitting there on my hard drive, taking up space, and I don't use it for anything. So it, it would be nice to have a little more flexibility over that. And that's one of the things I really like about this library is because I would use the majority of these sounds, if not all of them, and they don't take up a whole lot of space. So less than a gigabyte to download, and, uh, and it's very functional. We're going to go through some of the sounds. We're going to see how playable it is. And, uh, and and just get into enjoying it. So the first thing uh, that I like, or the second thing I should say, because the first thing was the download size. The next thing that I like about this library is uh, that it's really easy to tap into. So as you can see on my screen, I've got the contact engine up and, uh, and all these things. Now I have a lot of contact libraries now. Uh, I just downloaded or uh, installed uh, Ultimate 12. So I've got a huge amount of libraries in here. I've got to sort through them, put them together in an order that makes sense, which takes forever. If you go to uh, files, now those are the official, I think the ones that you have to have the password uh, or the code key for, and then you get that icon in there on that screen. But there are a ton of contact libraries that you can get that don't have uh, make you go through all that. And uh, they just stay right here in the files directory. So I made a directory for this for Rick. And you just go down to where that directory is. You select this one simple NKI file, and bam, you're in. It download or it uh, it installs that quick. And uh, all you had to do was unzip the downloaded file, put it in a directory, and there it is. Now I really like the interface of this because being that it's an industrial thing, you're thinking like a factory or an, an old abandoned factory or something like that. I picture people with like gas masks and you know those uh, those warning triangles that they put on things and. Uh, just kind of walking through one of those old abandoned areas. I've probably seen way too many horror movies. But this kind of gives you that feel just walking in like it's going to be intense. And uh, so the interface is very nice, very, very well done. It's also very functional. So there's two sections. You've got your main section and then your effects controls, which we're going to get into shortly. Uh, but what you first get when you uh, when you load up the file is you're going to get a taster of each sound. And I'll run you through a couple of those. Now, let's say that you're, uh, you know, you just want to use one sound to start with and you really like it. You're going to use it throughout a whole track. So we'll just select, uh, I don't know, the bell. Okay, so that's a nice sound, right? Got a nice long decay on it. But let's say, okay, well, that's great. I get this one bell. Woohoo. Well, there's two different things that you can do uh, that will give you the next result, which is A, you can go up here to this preview select button and you could click on it. And now that is your sound. So now you've just changed and you've uploaded that as a patch. And uh, the other way to do it would be to hit that uh, blue key off to the right, the C2, and either one will get you in and out of the actual patch mode. And now we're back to the, uh, the sampler. So you can go to either one of those. Either one will work. Uh, I would imagine that you can record that key switch on the fly as, uh, as MIDI data, and uh, you can go from patch to patch, whatever you're comfortable with. But, uh, but you do have to hit uh, the key to decide which one you want so you know where it is. So once you're in this mode, now obviously you have all different controls over the sound itself. And this is great because you really can shape it to what you want it to do. And of course, you've still got, uh, for those of you that are more comfortable with the contact engine, you've still got all of the regular contact things that you can do. You've got room to add effects. You can change them. Uh, you can reshape the sound uh, with the, the volume envelopes. Whatever you want to do, 
uh, you can still do as standard work in contact. But Rick's done a great job of making things really easy for you. So with each thing, he's got a, a few effects that are ready to go, uh, different EQs and envelopes that you can play with. But that's not all. There's so much more you can do with that. So uh, going again off of our bell sound. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, see, now I need to reselect it. All right, we'll work with this one. This is fun. Nice little crash there. And uh, so let's say that you want to add a little more reverb to it. Well, boom, you just click the reverb. Now it's way huge, right? And you can turn it off just as easily or a delay. Nice. And then you've got, you know, the, the different filters, you've got EQ, all the different things that you would want. Uh, you've got your stereo. stereo. Anything you want to do. So it's great that, uh, you know, and even from here, you can shape the envelope, you can change the attack, you can change the uh, sustain, all that stuff that without having to go into contact. So he's made it very easy by just putting it right up front. Very simple to use for you. Now, some of these sounds, um, they're pretty bright. So uh, you have the option right here of just dialing it back with a little less output or a little more output if you want it to stand out more. Uh, and you can also do that with the same contact, uh, the same standard contacts uh, uh, pan and volume up in the top right section of it. Uh, you could also tune it as you can with any other instrument in contact. So it's just that simple. Everything's right there, ready to go. And then uh, again, let's say that you want to change sounds. You can either flip the switch, pick a different sound. I like that. Let's go with that. So we flip the switch. Now we're back into there again. Add a little delay. That's a nice little ping pong, actually. I really like that. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why, but it seems really hard to find ping pong delay settings these days. It seems like most of the delays that I've been working with or have found recently, uh, they don't have a ping pong setting, which is a shame because I really like that. Uh, but, you know, it's easy enough to recreate on your own, but it's always nice when they have those already built in for you. So uh, the next section, though, you know, you've got a good amount of things right here. And then some of that will be on the uh, effects controls as well. It just depends on what's set up for each sound. Like this one has the reverb and delay ready to go. Uh, so when you go into your effects control section, which is the second tab here, now you've got all the effects just lined up nice and simple. And then the controls related to each effect, which is, again, very nice. It's all in one spot. And if you get lost, here's a little diagram right here uh, on the GUI of what you can do with the effects side and how to control it. So one mistake that I made was I was thinking originally that you had to actually flip the effect on and off to select it. But because I wasn't paying any attention and didn't have anyone to tell me, uh, that's what I thought. So then I said to Rick, hey, this is kind of weird. He's like, we'll read the sticker. So I read the sticker and here you go. So if you want to test out or you want to go from one effect to another without, uh, you know, without actually having to turn it on or off to do, you just click the name of the effect and it brings you to each one. There's this little stone looking thing above it that shows you which one you're on in case you can't see the highlight. So you've got two ways. You've got the uh, stone and you've got the highlighted name that tells you which one you're on. Uh, and then to turn the effect on or off, you just tap the switch. Red light goes on. That means the effect's ready to go. Turn it off and the effect's off. So let's hear our sound again. And we've heard the reverb. Nice and huge. And again, this is not uh, with, without me tweaking anything. This is just the standard effect that it's programmed to go to. Nice little chorus in there. I really like that. Then we go here to the phaser, kind of the same thing. And then if you want to, you know, obviously you can control the speed. You know, the funny thing is I've seen a lot of Rick's work and I can actually picture him shaking this metal plate as fast as you want him to as you turn this dial. Uh, and he'd probably do it too. Uh, so there's all different things. So then you've got the uh, the filter. You can uh, you can turn multiple things on. So 
So pretty much you can you can control just about anything you want. And anything that he didn't put in here that you want, uh, you can always add either in the regular contact engine or uh, you can do as an audio, uh, you know, an audio effect after you've uh, bounced it to an audio track. There's a really nice stereo. Nice tape. And again, you can add more warmth. And this is really going to depend, too, on the, the particular sounds that you pick because when you're dealing with percussion and, and reverb and that, not everything's going to work the same way in a warm uh, a warmer setting or a colder setting. Not every sound gets affected as well. So that's something that you can just play with. Well, that's actually quite nice. You'd think that I would have played with this before I did the recording, but you know what? I didn't. I mean, I played with it before, but I didn't test out this stuff uh, right before the recording like I should have. That would have been smarter. Maybe I'll do that on the next one. Well, that's got a hell of a sustain right there. So some nice, uh, nice different effects that you can play with there to really change the sound, kind of like a bit crusher. Then you've got your EQ. You can change to whatever you like. All very easy. So kind of like with any other library, I mean, when you've got things that are that simple to make such drastic changes in the sound, it really just comes down to sitting down and playing with it and learning you know, what's going to affect what to get the sound that you want. But it's so great to have things that are right at your fingertips that you can just uh, move slightly and get a different sound. And then the more you get to know your library, obviously, the quicker that you can achieve those sounds, uh, you know, on the fly. Because as composers, you know, if we if we don't have the sound we want, we have to create it like we want to do it quick because I don't want to waste a lot of time trying to figure out how to get what I want. I just want to get it. So if I sat down with this library for probably, I would say, 45 minutes to an hour and really worked with these settings, I could probably get down in my head pretty much where everything is that I would want and uh, just be able to make those adjustments on the fly whenever I'm composing. Uh, so here is uh, the compressor. You've got threshold, ratio, attack, you know, all the standard things that you would expect to see in a compressor. And, uh, and it's got a nice quick reaction to it. Uh, and then, of course, this last one. Really nice, clean options. Now, you're hearing a little bit of clicking as I turn these on and off. That's because I'm not letting the uh, effect tail out. And I think part of it is because I'm still learning this new sound card. I just picked up the Motu M4 for Christmas. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm just really kind of getting it configured now. But this is a great library. It's got a lot of good sounds. It's uh, very easy to uh, to work with. Again, just that that nice, simple key switch function uh, that, that helps you pick your patch and uh, turn it into uh, an actual patch. So you can do a couple different things. You can, uh, you can record the key switches, or you could just set up multiple tracks with this library, and uh, then you can program effects differently and however you like. This is probably something that I would say in a, in a song I might even use three or four instances of and just have the effects set differently per patch to kind of give a different levels of depth for the sounds that I'm using. But it's certainly a functional library, uh, very easy to use, very playable, which I really like. Uh, a lot of the percussion libraries, I find that they just don't, um, I don't know if it's they don't blend well or they don't work well, but so many of them just kind of, they don't sound big enough, you know, they don't really sound a uh, good in, a heavy industrial sound unless they're drowned in reverb, which is not what I particularly like. Uh, so this has a really good amount. You know, it gives you a, a depth that gives you the feeling that you're playing in a large room without just killing you with effects and actually letting you hear the actual sound of the percussive hit and, uh, and not have it buried in mucky reverb. So great job, Rick. Uh, really excited that this has come out. I'm looking forward to the rest of these that are going to come out. He said he was looking at doing a series of different things based on this engine. Obviously, it's going to be adapted to whatever the particular sounds are, but keep an eye out. And the, uh, the link to his site is in the show notes. And uh, Rick Allen's new library, Industrial Metal. We'll see you guys next time.